Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. As always, we are brought to you on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and our lovely YouTube channel, Propulsion Swimming. Um, on the phone with me, as usual during this lockdown time, is Dan. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are things with you? Yeah, we're we're getting through. It's been, what is it, close to seven weeks of lockdown now? I've been in my house for, yeah, I think it's the seventh week now, and I'm very much losing my mind, but I think lockdown is easing slowly, getting there slowly. Yeah, everyone's still healthy. Um, your sister, who's a nurse, is healthy. She's doing really well. She's doing an amazing yeah, job. She's, she's doing a very good job, actually, bless her. She was really scared at the start, but she's seeing the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel now, so it's getting better all the time. That's great news. Um, so yeah. on this week's Propulsion Swimming Podcast, we are going to talk about... A slightly controversial topic, and one that might wind both of us up during this podcast, so I apologise in in advance, Um, but we're actually going to talk about drug cheats and drugs in swimming. Yeah. So, in the news, I think it was last week, um, Sung Yang has appealed his eight years suspension, and we haven't actually mentioned anything about Sung Yang in this topic since I stupidly named him in my swimming team of the decade. I mean, he's a very good swimmer. There's no no taking anything away from him from that, but it's very, very controversial in terms of his drug story, isn't it? Yeah, so we've left the topic well alone until this point now, where we're in lockdown, no pools are open, so why not let's have a chat about it and kind of see if the world of swimming is doing enough to deter um, drug cheats. Yeah, so that's our big question at the end of what we're going to talk about. Is is FINA doing enough to stop cheating and swimming? That's what we're going to try and answer at the end, I think. Yeah. Okay, Dan, so kick things off for us. Why has has Sun Yang made the news? Why has he been given this eight-year ban? So he was initially banned banned for three months for a drug called trimetazidine. (laughs) I hope I haven't got that right. Um, And so he was then banned, yeah, for three months. And he's he's always had many problems with drug testing, whether it's blood samples, urine samples, uh, or just refusing to cooperate with um, testers. And so that was his his first incident, if you like. And then years later, I can't remember what that year that was. I think it was 2014, his first one. And then he's been, in 2018, he kept refusing to do these drug tests. And now he's been given an eight-year ban. Yeah, and this ban wasn't actually from the kind of the head of swimming or the, or the swimming authority, FINA. This was actually from someone no. else, wasn't it? Uh, it was from WADA, yeah. Yeah, so the World the Anti-Doping Agency. That's right, yes, yeah. Yeah, and FINA actually didn't recommend this ban, which is kind of... It's gone under the radar slightly because he has been banned now and that's kind of, it's slipped into all of the news in like a tiny sentence somewhere. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't quite understand that. If the World Anti-Doping Agency is saying you're banned, why are the swimming agencies saying, nah, it's okay? Well, this is where it all gets very confusing. I thought they would be in unison a little bit, especially on a, a, a big topic of drug testing, you know? Yeah. I, w- I would always just follow the, the biggest people, which is WADA. Yes. And just... Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're the ones that are used in most sports. Yeah. In fact, every sport. It might be every sport. Yeah, so he's now... What's he, what's he doing now? He's appealing this ban, but he's taken it to the court of... Or CAS in Switzerland, is it? Yeah, that's right. It's just to make... I think it's, uh, he's appealing to make it fair or something like that. It's eight years fair. Yeah, but so they can true. actually... They can't prove whether he's been guilty or not guilty of the offence. It's just whether the punishment of the offence is fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, in, especially in, when it's um, drug testing, if you if you miss a drug test, you're, it kind of counts as being refused. Like refusing a test, so you're kind of classed as guilty. Yeah. So that's the reason, that's the reason why he's got this eight-year ban. But yeah, he's started this appeal now. Whether it's going to work or not, I've no idea. But... Um, if you get caught twice, eight years is the maximum penalty. And it's not just in swimming, it's in boxing as well. Um, so eight years is the maximum penalty, which basically puts you out of the end of your career, really, doesn't it? Yeah, so by him missing all of these tests, he's kind of presumed as guilty. Yes, yeah. Even though he hasn't actually been cl- 
classified as testing positive. Apart from that first initial one where he got banned for three months, but the second time he hasn't actually been caught. Yeah, so that that's why it's that's why it is up in the air slightly whether he deserves to be. But in this day and age, I don't think you can go around missing drug tests and kind of get away with it. No, no, especially when it's the second time as well. Mm. I I always believe in everyone deserves a second chance. But if it does happen the second time, then you you got to be out of the sport. That's my opinion on it anyway. Yeah. Um. So another swimmer who is going to wind you up. Mm, this is a big one. Yeah. yeah. Is Efimova. And it's slightly, she's slightly getting on my nerves right now because or during lockdown in social media, she's everywhere because she's doing this workout on her kitchen counter. I'm not sure if anyone listening seen it, but it, it takes some hell of a lot of core strength and everyone's praising her for it. But she's failed two drugs tests and See, this is where I don't, admitted guilt. I don't know why it's not so consistent. You know, if Sonny Young's getting an eight-year penalty for a second drug um test or whatever, then FMOVA should be having exactly the same thing, surely. Yeah. I, I think it but was I, quite I, early on in her career before she got to the big name she is now. So maybe the bans weren't quite as long then? I don't know, but there's something that scene I need to look at, whether it's consistent or not. Because there, should no, there shouldn't be any difference between Sun Yang and FMOVA. If you've taken a drug test and failed twice, which they both have effectively then um, the punishment should be the same. Yeah, if anything, FMOVA is a hell of a lot worse than Sun Yang. Yes, because she has actually tested positive on both occasions. Yeah, And, and, admitted, and actually, yeah. I, had a, I had a little research before, and her total ban was only 16 months. Oh, blimey. So that doesn't even make up, like, your Olympic cycle. You could take that as a rest period. Well, she went to Rio in the end, didn't she? Mm. Although she was, she was booed at every race in Rio... Um, and a lot of swimmers criticise her, like Lily King and stuff like that. Um, she was still actually able to compete, which is terrible, but just puts swimming in a bad light, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not even sure that's swimming. I think it's Olympics as a whole. I don't quite understand why drugs cheats are allowed at the Olympics, because like Justin Gatlin went to the last Olympics for athletics, and he's he was banned for almost six years for drugs. Yeah, exactly. I uh, mean... It, I still stand by, if you get caught twice, your career's over. That's the way I see it. Yeah. Okay, so you've done research before this podcast. Yeah, So for the novices, so people who don't quite understand the drug testing procedure, what what actually happens in the world of swimming for testing? So it's all run by FINA. FINA's the main governing body for it all, in terms of swimming. And they are, there are every major competition, whether it's Olympics, Worlds, uh, even like the World Youth uh, Olympics and stuff like that. And they do di- two different types of drug testing. So there's in competition and then there's out of competition. Right. So, of course, in competition, like, simply they just they turn up to competitions and they do they do random tests on like a handful of athletes, basically, to see if they're taking anything and they're all clear and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, I also found out, but I didn't, even, I didn't know, maybe I should have known, but if um, any world record is swam, then that swimmer immediately gets tested. And if, yeah. they, if they don't pass the test, then the world record doesn't stand. I did think that was the case. Um, yeah, it makes, it makes sense. I just didn't realise. So, this is going to another sport. Is um, Do you know the Tour de France? Yes, yeah. Every stage winner and every person who's in control of the yellow jersey, so mm. who's leading the race, at, at the end yeah. of every day's racing, they have to have a blood test or a... a or a drugs test, even. Well, that's the only way they're going to manage it all, I guess. Yeah, but because cycling has such a big drug cheat problem, they're now really, really hot on it. So are all of these testing... Is this testing enough? So how how many... Do you know how many athletes are getting tested at each meet? No, it's just, it just says random tests. So they obviously just pick a handful of athletes and they pick people at random, and that's the way it's done. Okay. Um, unless... Unless they're the top end swimmers, so if you take Adam Peaty for example, he probably gets tested quite a lot. Yeah, and I'm sure Phelps did as well. Yeah, which means these kind of idols in swimming are um, kind of held to a good. What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Held to a higher standard. Yes. Yeah. Well, then the other type of drug testing that I was on about was the else competition one, which is where anyone ranked in the top twelve in the world 
this is long course. Anyone ranked in the top 12 in the world is, is always drug tested. Okay. So that, that puts the elites always in testing all the time. It does, but 12 isn't a massive amount. Well, if you think of an Olympic final, that's eight people. It's only a little bit more than that, isn't it? It, yeah, be, you, it you, should be more, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. It's just... Obviously, swimming's not a sport with masses and masses of money behind it. So maybe no, there, well, is, well, there isn't quite the funding to do all of that testing. But the Olympics certainly uh, is a place where there's a lot of a funding and they get a hell of a lot from sponsorships. So why isn't almost every athlete at the Olympics tested? Well, it should be. That's, it should be. That should be protocol. Yeah. If you want to compete at the highest level, which is the Olympics, then you should have uh, all these testings done. Mm. So my kind of comparison with FINA's reaction to drug testing right now is how quickly they were to ban all of the super suits that set all the world records in, was it 2009 at Rome? Rome was the last one, yeah. Yeah, so because there was suddenly this controversy in swimming that the suits were getting all the times, they yeah. they banned these suits outright very, very quickly. They jumped on it. I remember all of the suits going on bargain sale and we had like one meet of the year we could buy them and use them before they were banned. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so why aren't... I don't understand why Fina aren't that quick to ban a drugs cheat. Because they, like, like well, I said before, they weren't the ones to ban Sun Yang. Yeah, I don't understand it. I mean, swimming cheats... Swimming drug cheats don't happen too often, I think. I did a bit of research, and there's only been 50 cases or something like that. 50 cases. Okay. So it is a clean all sport. The years that been on. Say again? So it, so it is a clean sport. It's just whether they're, whether they're harsh enough on these drug cheats when they do pop up. Yes, yeah. Well, if you, I, there's, like I said, there's over 50 cases. But I took some of the, the, the three biggest names on the list that I saw. Um, do you remember Jessica Hardy? The American swimmer? I do, yeah. Yeah, she was. She qualified for the Beijing Olympics in 2008, but then failed a drug test, got a year bad, and then was dropped from the Olympic squad. Okay, so America then you go, then you go, So that was, that's quite a big ban, well, quite a big punishment, mm. especially when it's only a first time, I guess. But then you look at someone like Cesar Chalo, who did fail a drug test, but was only given a warning. So the, the consistency isn't, I just don't like it at all. Okay. And then on the other hand, you get Ryan Loxley, who was, who you know, he had a pitch on Instagram of having an IV taken, then he got a 14-month ban. Yeah. So all of those three are completely different. So there's, there's no guideline, really? No. Or at no. least there's not a so transparent each, guideline. Each drug has its different benefits, but I just uh, I don't understand it either. It's not transparent enough for me and you to understand what FINA are actually doing. No, no. I just think if the, if the drug is on the list, then the punishment should be the same. Yeah. And especially if you test a positive twice, like I've said before, then your career should be over. You should be banned forever. Yeah, because you've got an unfair advantage. No matter if the drug is out of your system by the time that you're at the Olympics, you've got this backlog of training. You've got this store, yeah. which everyone talks about. You need that workload of training to be good. They're going to have yeah. a workload of training that's higher than everyone else because... They, they've been able to build themselves up through drugs. Yeah, yeah. And this is what annoys me about Efimova, because she was allowed to swim at Rio. She won silver in the 200 breaststroke. And, um, you know, I used to swim with Chloe Tatton at Cardiff? Yeah. She came fourth in that race, so if Efimova wasn't there, Chloe would have got a bronze. Yeah, so it's kind of cheated other people out of their so, achievements. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. God knows what Chloe could have gone on to achieve, or maybe, like, out of career opportunities would have been given to her if she had got an Olympic bronze. Exactly, exactly. So that was, the drugs in a way has just taken away her bronze medal. Yeah. Which, uh, which isn't right and I'd be, she was pretty upset about it and I would be as well. Yeah, of course. I, I, I don't understand it. I, no. It's a tough podcast to do but um, it's, it's a topic that it needs to be talked about more. It does, yeah. Well, the ultimate question, we know we said at the start, are FINA doing enough to stop the cheating and swimming? So what would you say about that? I don't think so. No? I, I don't know enough about the testing and whether they're testing enough people or stuff like that. But the punishments and the way that they're kind of stand off about it, 
mm. kind of it says to me that they need to take more charge and authority if the situation i mean all you have to do is look at isl and see how swimmers kind of walked over fina and made that yeah. made their own swimming league to say how just it kind of just shows how much respect swimmers actually have for fina right now it's not well, exactly overly high and this is why swimmers like the ISL, because they very much said the first rule was no drug cheats allowed. Yeah. And every swimmer appreciated that, and that's why they enjoyed it, and obviously the money helps as well. Mm. But it's a, the big rule that everyone needs to be clear about. Yeah, so... In summary, I would say, no, they're not doing enough. They just they need to be a lot more authoritative about the decisions they're making, and a lot more transparent with me and you, who are... We're not swimmers. We are fans of the sport and we don't know what they're doing we can't understand yeah. it i think um i think they're doing enough with the elites as in like like i said the top 12 in the world they're doing enough for them yeah. but i think it's the ones lower down as well it's got to be at least the top 25 in my opinion that should be testing throughout the year yeah um but i'm very much the same as you is the i'm very much the consistent sort of person so with all the the drug cheeks that i mentioned they should all have the same ban yeah, you know, um, and they're they're not. Everyone's different, so that sh- that needs to be looked at. And I always think if the punishment is really really severe, then people aren't going to do it. Yeah, exactly. So if they if they were to ban Sun Yang for eight years, then suddenly you don't you won't see many swimmers say, "Oh, I'm not going to take the risk of taking drugs," just in case I get an eight year ban. Yeah, if the punishments in the past had been strong enough, there wouldn't still be people trying to cheat now. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, the Sun Yang situation is a little bit different because he hasn't actually failed a test. He just hasn't cooperated. He hasn't, turned, he hasn't kind of, he's missed the tests. And I yeah, think but, that's, the, that's the hold up with this situation. Yeah, but it, at the same time, he needs to be held to a standard that every other swimmer is. It's not, it's yeah, not fair to expect the Mac, Mac Hortons of the world and people like that to be tested yeah. like they are. And then they're doing all of their training, keeping clean, and they don't know that Sun Yang is. They need that. They need the level playing field. That's what they banned the super suits for, so there was a level playing field. Yeah, so he, essentially it's the same sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, so he can't come out and say, oh, I don't want to do a drugs test, but you're, you're getting rid of that level playing field. Yeah, yeah. So it's something that needs to be looked at. And um, I just think whether it's WADA that's in control or FINA or both, ideally mm. both, just get it all sourced out. Yeah, but the the good thing is there isn't actually that many cases in swimming. No, it is a very small amount. Yeah, it's just that one or two, and it does tend to be right now the bigger names, which are slightly yeah. controversial. Yeah. Which well, um, doesn't just affect swimming, like you say, Justin Gatlin. It kind of affects the whole sport. Funnily yeah, it is. The, the it person. is the sporting world, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. so um, I'd I'd say we've ranted enough about drug seats. I think we've been as impartial as we possibly can. Dan's done research on the facts. Um, mm-hmm. If you guys at home have any opinions on this, whether we're whether you think we're right or wrong, or what sort of punishments you would kind of hand out to drug cheats, why don't you get in touch with us on our Facebook page or our Instagram? Um, we will link both of them into the description of this podcast, or you can comment on our YouTube video. Um, we we love to hear what your opinions are, and uh, why don't we read some out on the next week's podcast? Yeah, we should do that definitely. Yeah. Um, but for this week's show, um, Dan, it's been lovely to have you on the phone again. Hopefully, we can see each other again soon. Yes. Well, everyone, stay safe. Keep going. We're about a couple of weeks away, I'd say, until lockdown is eased. Yeah. So stay safe. Keep going. Stay mentally healthy. Yeah, and um, I will speak to you in seven days. Yes, I'll catch you on the next one.